So one of the kind of like the nicest parts I feel about having bullet journaled for as long as I have is that we can look back and see our progress of which some it's like, wow, you thought that was good then. Oh, that's unfortunate for you. <laughs> talking about myself here, talking about myself. Um, and some parts it's just like, oh, that was a really cool idea. I should try that again. But anywho, Today, as the title suggests, we are recreating my first bullet journal setup. Now, I started bullet journaling in 2016, the 4th of November. That is my anniversary. So this was my first notebook. It was an LT 1917 because that's what everybody was using and everybody was harping on about how amazing it was. Needless to say, I was a little bit of an LT 1917 fangirl, but I did quickly move away from that when I got really super sick of the ghosting because their paper at the time was 80 GSM. I think they do technically still have that. But anywho, so we started off my notebook with my name. I remember how long it took me to do this and I'm like, it's not, it's like, it's okay, but it's not great. Anywho, and I actually had an index and was using it because, well, you know, <laughs> the index was pre-printed, so I might as well actually make use of it. This is where I dropped my pen. We will not be recreating that because that's that's not the business. I don't want that. Uh, but yeah, I dropped my pen and I remember being like devastated. I was like, oh my gosh, I've ruined my journal. Anywho, we've got that, we've got that. This was the first page I set up. And again, I remember how long this took me. <laughs> and like the pre-planning part being like, oh yeah, I'll write a goals header. Oh, now I want to put a box around it. Oh, now I've drawn the box too high up. So now the, the end of the G sticks out the bottom. <laughs> like, oh, well, all of this was done, like the coloring was done with pencils because that's pretty much the only supply I had at the time. And then this light blue text was one of my like creative memories, uh, fine liner pens because I used to do scrapbooking. So we had that. And I remember being very particular about my goals list. I wanted my goals list to be in order of completion. So I didn't actually write any goals down. <laughs> I wrote no goals on the list to start with because I wanted to list them out by like points that I had hit them kind of a thing. So, oh well. <laughs> I think most of them were in order. Some of them weren't, but possibly. I don't know. Actually, these do all look in order. Doesn't matter. That's probably because I got to the ones that I had achieved and hadn't written down. And then another one had popped up and I was just like, no, we can't write it down. Then it won't be in order. So this is what I kind of consider the first actual setup, though. So as I said, started on the 4th of November and set these pages up. And this was very much inspired by Boho Berry, who was really big at the time. So this was kind of similar to the layouts that they would use pretty often. So this is kind of what I'm thinking of recreating today, recreating the monthly log, the habit tracker, not the daily logs, because it would be a little bit, I think, strange to recreate daily logs because they're kind of like a build the plane as we fly it type thing. But I thought we could recreate, oh, love this, recreate my first weekly spread. Yep. So we're going to be doing three pages today, this one, this one, and this one. But I guess the first question really is, are we going for like a true recreation where we try and make it as similar as possible? Or are we going to try and do it so it's like an elevated version of? I'm going to put a poll in. We're going to do some typing. Of course, if you're here on the replay, sorry that you can't contribute in the poll, but I'm sure we can find something for you guys to contribute more specifically in the comment section. <laughs> okay, so the question was, how are we recreating today? And our options are true recreation, which kind of looks like true recreation, but that's fine, or elevated recreation. There we go. Asking the communities in three, two, one, done. Excellent. It is up now. Remember, you need to drink today. I am drinking water. I know what the actual heck, but I'm very much enjoying actually using my drink bottle. And my body is also enjoying having some water. So, tink. So... You know how people complain about like bleeding and ghosting in their journal and such? Um, usually when we think about that, we're talking about pens. This was a pencil. <laughs> like, my pencil bled through, specifically this pink one, because it bled through here. And then it also bled through on firework. Yeah. And I know that like I was doing little quotes in amongst my uh, daily logs because I wanted to fill space and I didn't 
you know, I, I, I couldn't come to the, the conclusion that I should just do two columns of stuff, which is kind of what I do now. So I was like, oh, maybe you're a firework because it was like Guy Fawkes time around there. And then don't compare your beginning to someone else's middle. And I absolutely love that I put this in like my first daily log in my first journal. So every time I look back, I'm just like, oh, past Jess, so wise. Alrighty, let's have a look at that poll and see what we're reckoning. So we have 98% for an elevated recreation. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. So that is what we're going to be doing. So part of that kind of elevated version of is going to involve using better supplies. Like I'm not going to use bleedy pencils. <laughs> I'm probably not going to use pencils at all because it's going to be a little bit more akin to what I typically do. Uh, we're going to use a better notebook. So well, I mean, not better. LT 1917 has its place. It's great for some things. Just don't want to use it for this. And we're also possibly going to tweak the style of this one so it's still vertical, but it's not like a turn your journal to try and use it because that's just really freaking frustrating, honestly. So what are we going to need? We're going to need the notebook. So we'll grab this one out. This is the R&D Boudreaux or Research and Development where I just put like, you know, all of the layouts that I make for different videos and such. So we'll flick to a page that makes sense of that. Whoops, spoilers. You guys have already seen that video maybe. <laughs> so we'll do that here. This is where our setup's going to start. We're going to need some black pens. I'm wondering if we don't try and actually do like pr proper calligraphy and use a Tombow Fudinowski because I didn't have one when I did this the first time. We're going to need a ruler, of course, because... <laughs> Your girl's not going to be freehanding that kind of a line. But I'm thinking when we get to this banner, I don't actually want to draw the lines in. Or if I'm going to draw the lines in, I'm going to use a Stettler Tri Plus Fine Liner, maybe in this color blue. We're going to need to we're going to need to find some pens that actually match our our color palette that we've got going on here. So I'm shove you guys to the side so that we can, yeah, over there, scoot. We're going to have a look at me Tombow swatch to see what we can find in terms of colors. So I'm thinking for this blue, we're probably just going to use 452 because it's like fairly similar, which I already have out, which is kind of nice. And for the gray, we might use N75 because that looks fairly neutral. Like, I remember that N60 used to be my favorite gray, like, of all time. Um, I don't use it quite as much anymore. <laughs> but yes. So, I can, I can, I can, blah, blah, blah. use your words, Jessica. I can understand why the LT1917 was so popular. And I think it's probably because it kind of started with, like, you know, the original bullet journal method or whatever. And people getting, like, the same notebook that Ryder was kind of recommending because Ryder would, would use that type of notebook and then Boho Berry would use that type of notebook and then Pretty Prints and Paper would use that type of notebook and those guys were all really big at the time. So it's like, a oh, I want my notebook to look like these guys. I'm going to use the same supplies, which means that everybody started using that. And that's not like, not like a bad thing, you know. I totally understand trying to use the same supplies that, like, you know, people big in your area are using. Like... I think that when everybody kind of switched to Archer and Olive, there was maybe part of the reason why Archer and Olive got more popular, <laughs> like, possibly, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I think that with the way that I like to journal now, this type of notebook with this type of paper is not what I need to achieve what I want to do now. Yeah. When I was doing minimal bullet journaling, like just taking notes, this was fine. Like <laughs> I actually quite enjoyed it for that. I liked the kind of usedness of the paper, but when I'm doing anything even slightly artistic, I prefer to have thicker paper so that you don't see through it. Anywho. So <laughs> you can't cope having 60 unused pages. It's just not you. Yeah, that's fair. I usually, if I have a notebook like that, that I really just want to move out of, I just use the remaining pages for like, kind of like brainstorm notes kind of a thing that isn't necessarily at the time that the journal was servicing like the life of the journal is you know the pages that I've already set up and then notes and stuff that I want to take after the fact I just put in the back of that journal if I really want to move but anyway yeah totally like what Monica says it is also about what suppliers are available to you because like Archer totally wasn't around but LT1917s you could get like we had 
the lt1917.co.nz store uh we had like gordon harris that sold them um slowly they've started getting them into like other um stationary stationary news agency kind of shops but yes anyway back to pen selection so we're going to use our 452 we're going to use n75 which is this guy scroll over and we're gonna i kind of want to use a dot marker for this because it's like you know it's elevated oh so where are my dot markers <laughs> actually i should probably look at what color i'm gonna i'm gonna do a little bit of swatching i've just got this notepad out because i was using it the other day so you are beautiful and light which is kind of what i want you are a little bit more saturated which is also beautiful we love that you are a pretty good color match to that because i've been using these two pen colors together in my june setup so so I know, and we're going to need a dot marker that kind of matches that. So you scoot over there, my friend. I'll go and consult my dot marker swatch, which is here. So I think that blue bonnet is probably going to be the one to go. Like, that makes a lot more sense. Like, powder blue is pretty, but it's not the right hue. And pale turquoise is just a little too green. Light blue actually is a pretty good match too, though. So we'll pull out light blue, which is from the highlighter pack, and we'll pull out the blue bonnet, which is from the 12 pack. <laughs> Devastated. What a mess. Anyways. I need to find some better storage for some of my pens. Like, this guy is, like, if they bring out more dot markers, I'm, I'm boned because this is so full now. <laughs> It's so full. So, oh, nice. Blue's on top. Okay, so this is the da, da, blue bonnet. There we go. It says it right there. And we need the pale, pale blue, light blue. We need light blue. Not you. There we go. That looks a tad more aggressive. No, don't run away. So we'll try both of those out and we'll see which one matches better. Because I do like it if all my blues match. I like my blues matching. Let's see. First stub using did not like the LT1917, so you bit the bullet and not scribbles that matters. Yeah. I liked I liked the scribbles that matter um journal. When I first got it, I think their paper was 120 GSM. Um and it wasn't coded, so it was quite a change. These two look exactly the same. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it was it was a fair change from um the LT1917, but I I didn't love the uncodedness, but I didn't, it took some getting used to. I think that, like, despite the ghosting in the LT1917, I think that you could add more pen to the page and, and not get bleed through because there was a little bit, tiny bit of water resistancy, very small. Um, and I know that people who and I say people, this is a big generalization. People who have said that they like watercoloring sometimes prefer the LT1917 because of the coating compared to the scribbles that matter. I mean, this was a while ago though, so the scribbles that matter has probably changed their paper. In fact, they most certainly probably have changed their paper because I've heard that that's something that's happened. Okay. They, they literally look exactly the same. I don't know which one to use now. Is this just like a my pen thing? I also don't remember which one I put down where, so that certainly doesn't help. I'm just going to use blue bonnet because why not? And we'll put the light, the light fluoro blue. It's like this is the fluoro green, and you can tell that it is very punchy. Like boom, green in your face. Oh yeah, you can get 160 GSM. You're using an Odyssey from Etsy right now because they have Achilles one that you wanted so bad. I think I have an Odyssey notebook. Let's investigate. <laughs> no, let's just get distracted. Odyssey? Odyssey notebooks and copper calligraphy. Yes, I have this one, which is, that's the packaging though. That's not the, the notebook design. The notebook design is a like globe, I think. It's like the world. Yeah, I haven't used it yet. I haven't, I'm supposed to do it for a review and I haven't gotten around to it yet. Distraction count one. Yeah, I know. I'm going. <laughs> Getting back on task. Yeah, I never get distracted. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, so I think that's all of the supplies that off the top of my head I probably want to use. I'm also going to use some washi tape because we're going to do some masking. 
And I'm gonna need a black pen, but I've got like plenty of black pens that I can pick from, so no big deal with that. Yeah. We will also be using a pencil because I know that, you know, original Jess, <laughs> original Jess, like this is like the new elevated Jess. Anyways, original Jess certainly used a pencil when she was putting things in her journal. So I'm wondering if we don't also want like a pale blue because we're doing an elevated version, so we can do maybe some horizontal lines because. Jess, current Jess, loves a good horizontal line. Uh, we're going to need a, we need to make sure that we get the spacing on this right, actually. So as you can see from here, we had the washi border. We're not going to put that in because it's not super necessary. That was just to mark parts of my journal so that I knew where things started. But <laughs> Jess 2.0, the past Jess. The, previously in Jess's life, um, we have three columns taken up actually for the numbers for the month because in the first column I was putting some little signifiers to show when certain things were happening. Uh, so we had dollar signs for payday, I'm pretty sure. The exclamation point I assume was just like something important possibly like or maybe something fun. It's just I didn't have a lot of fun stuff. No, because there was Ben Van Der Eichel's party and I didn't exclamation point that so possibly that was just for you know, things that were coming up that were a little bit more like hey do the thing kind of a thing uh -huh. <laughs> and um yeah was that like coke zero jess no coke zero jess is still here don't be fooled by the water coke zero jess is still alive and well she's just been morning section has been replaced by hey maybe we start with water first because it's slightly better for you uh that jess so three columns. We'll just start with the numbers. Are we going to do this for next month? That kind of makes sense in my head. We're just going to use Me Ink Joy because I love Me Ink Joy. Uh, is it 30 days in June? Yes. 30, 29, 28, 27. I do not need to count these, but I kind of do because otherwise I will stuff them up. And much like past Jess, I will be devastated. All right, 24, 23. When I'm numbering, uh, I sometimes like to start at the bottom so that I know that my calendar has enough space. Yeah. Um, 22, 21, 22, 22, 23, 24, 19. The exclamation part could be for holidays, except Thanksgiving isn't actually a holiday here. <laughs> so uh, I think it might have just been because I had my appraisal meeting or something. And it was like, oh, alarm bells. We gotta do a thing. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now, we could see that Jess liked the idea of highlighting the weekends with the little dots. So we're gonna use the dot marker to do that rather than colored pencil. Uh, which is just a little bit easier. Um, I do love that I used to use colored pencils because I literally had no pens and it was very soon into my bullet journaling journey that I got on to just buying the Tombos because I got completely on the hype train with those. I also got completely on the hype train with the uh, mild liners too. And then I didn't use them. And then in my later Jess life, went and been like, oh yeah, they bought out new mild liners. I must complete the collection. And then other inner Jess is like, what the heck? No, you don't need to do that because you don't use them. And I'm like, shut your face. <laughs> I want them. Nobody said anything about need. Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I know that some of you will have that too, like, you, you know that you don't really need a supply, but you've already started collecting the supply. So when they bring out more versions of it, you're like, I need to get them, even though I'm not using them because I'm a completionist in that respect. Like Jess with the acrylographs and Jess with the calliographs and Jess with the mild liners. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love enjoy pens. Yeah. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Just so that we're all aware this is in relation to Melinda's comment. <laughs> yes, the ink joy pens. Love it. Oh my gosh. No, 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 no. Deb, there's not going to be a day. Okay, we shouldn't say never. It could happen. Maybe one day I'll just be like, you know what? I'm, a, I'm done with Coke Zero. But I, I do not see that day being anytime soon. <laughs> so we've got those in. We need to put the Saturday and Sunday. 
I just like to do them last so we have a little bit more time for the pen to dry so that we don't get any feathering because past Jess would be devastated by feathering, much like current Jess is mildly inconvenienced by feathering. Cute. So that's got all of our days of the month and the initials to signify which day of the week they are. And then that first column in theory would be used for the, um, like, signifiers whatever they be uh so that could be you know dollar sign to indicate that it is the payday or an exclamation point to indicate that it is something special or maybe a heart to represent date night i feel like i need to write these things down okay so we're gonna possibly put in a key so that then future jess knows what current jess was doing we can have a heart we can have an exclamation point we could have a um i need something to signify like a bill so that could be like payday not that i super have a regular payday this could be like uh, social time and we could have an exclamation point as like important so it could be like an appoint appointment an important appointment <laughs> uh i'm glad that some of you guys have the whole gotta catch them all vibes exactly gotta catch them all gotta catch them all <laughs> Um, let's see. Something for a bill. Mm -mm 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 -mm. We'll think on that. Because I don't really want to draw, like, a dollar. Oh, a dollar's not too bad. It looks more like a Japanese flag. Like, <laughs> but, oh well. <laughs> Very confused with all of these Jesses. I know, right? I feel like we need, like, a proper timeline. But it's probably going to end up being, like, some, like, weird network kind of thing. Or, like, a Venn diagram. Okay. I'm distracted again. That was like a self-distraction counter. Ding. Okay. So horizontal lines because we said we wanted them. Because why not? So we are turning the journal to be in a more helpful orientation. We are holding our pen steady and dragging it towards ourselves. So when Jess first started doing her journaling, she she kind of liked the idea of the horizontal lines like this kind of came in a little bit later where people started to more so do this but she also didn't like the idea of doing them by hand like just free birding it here because she just was worried that she wouldn't keep them straight enough for her persnickety biscuit ways so she she if she ever did it which was not very often but if she ever did these horizontal lines she would washi tape the full page so that she could get super super straight lines uh, because she was just a little bit anal like that. That's okay. She this, this represents growth, right? Because nowadays I'm okay with doing this as long as it's a light colored pen. If it's a light colored pen, then if I mess up, you can't really see it as bad. It's okay. Uh, we also just take our time. I feel like I've just got better with handling my pen. I mean, you know, knock on wood because now I'm going to end up jinxing that. <laughs> but it's okay. I just, especially for this style of calendar, yeah, I um, I quite like having these horizontal lines put in because otherwise it's just a little bit hard for me to see what lines up with what. And like, yes, we do have the numbers for the month right there. It, it could be not as difficult as I make it out to be, but it's just like an added little visual to help us out. And anything we can do to help our future selves is good, right? Future us will thank us for this. Future us will also thank us for this in terms of like deciding to do this before we start writing things on the calendar. Because especially if like me, you write with an ink joy or another non waterproof pen, trying to do it afterwards, just like, yeah, no. Nah. Okay, well, I'm glad you're feeling bad for using so much washi because guess who it is? It's time to use some more washi. But we're only going to be doing it for the top banner. We're not going to do it for like every single line on the calendar because that would be a little bit much <laughs> too much that doesn't sound like me at all now for this one i'm actually placing the washi tape slightly above the dot grid so i can actually see the dots and i'm going to do the same thing with the lower dots because if you recall what we're starting with here we're doing all of these on a diagonal and the way that i put this diagonal in is by attempting to join up the dots Though I think what I also did first was put in the horizontal lines, which meant that I couldn't see the dots, which was super frustrating. Good job, me. Now, cut this off. And we'll put the next one on. Yeah, like a bill could be an envelope. That makes sense. 
I like that. You've got mail. Oh no, it's just a bill. You're an adult now. People don't send you letters or <laughs> whatever. Though I feel like nowadays people who are adults are probably more likely to get letters that are just letters. Because I don't think that many... Emphasis on many. This is a big generalization. I don't think many younger persons send snail mail anymore. I was like, but I could send an email, but I could send a text. I'm like, you certainly could. Alrighty, so one of the things that I said for this part was that I didn't want to do the black lines. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use our blue Stetler Tri Plus Fineliner and I'm going to do blue lines because then it'll blend a little bit better. You only get credit card offers. Yeah, I don't even get that, which is fine. I mean, I'm not too fast. Mostly the bills or it might be like something from the council or it could be i i don't even know the last piece of mail that i got what was it probably you know those like addressed to your house spam <laughs> don't know how to word that the ones that are you know addressed to your address and sometimes even to you as a person but it is just junk mail and you're like yeah i didn't i didn't want this thank you for this waste of paper so because we're only going one dot grid box across, I'm not too fussed with doing this by hand. Uh, if I was doing more than that, I would probably want to use a ruler just because we would want our lines to be nice and straight and parallel with each other. But it's not too far over, so it should be okay. So we've got a little stripe going. Because when I got into bullet journaling, I was very much attracted by the idea of the decorative side of stuff. So, I wanted to do a little bit of decoration. So, this is where these lines help because now when I'm colouring in, because they are such a good colour match to the Tombow that I'm using, they blend quite nicely. So, I don't have to worry so much about like going over the lines or whatever if I just went straight in with the Tombow. Oh no, she says that and then immediately goes over the line. I could probably also not use the brush tip. I could probably use the bullet tip. But I'm feeling dangerous this morning. Yep. Ready to tackle anything, including these candy stripe lines. <laughs> yeah, we still I still get the occasional Christmas cards, but they're not from like I mean, do I know any younger people who would want to send me a Christmas card? No. Uh, I mean, they're, they're not from anybody my age, at least. They're usually from my older relatives. Um, I think last year I got, like, three Christmas cards. One of them was hand-delivered, though, so that doesn't really count because they came to my house for Christmas. Uh, and then the other two were sent by the mail, but they were both from older relatives. I do, I, like, it's weird. I like Christmas cards. I could not be bothered writing Christmas cards. <laughs> like, and I also feel like while I like to receive them, I don't necessarily like the idea of buying them to write, like, a generic message in. I feel like if I'm going to write a Christmas card, I want to have something, like, more to say than just Merry Christmas. I don't know. I think it's the same idea with birthday messages, though. If I'm going to write you a birthday card, I want to have something more to say than just happy birthday. <laughs> so we're going in with our grey now and just filling in between the gaps. And the reason that we've done the blue first and the grey second is because the grey is nice and light, so it can butt up against the blue and even go over a little bit, and it's actually not, like, a big deal. I can be a little bit more blasé with this one, which is nice. <laughs> so rather than having to be, like, you know, going with the grey first and trying to be really uh, specific about where I'm placing the colour and then having to be specific again with where I put the blue. I just need to be specific once. Now, one thing I do need to do, though, is the end of this. And that needs to be done in a more specific way so that it caps off nicely. But other than that, oh, this looks cute. I like this. I mean, it takes too much time for what I would do typically because usually I do some other kind of decorative stuff. But that's quite satisfying. I quite like that. <laughs> How the tables have turned from Erin's stream last night to now. I mean, I'm much more well rested now. <laughs> Let's see. That looks nice. Well, at least I think it does. So 
previously we had it with the black outline and we also had a black divider here. I'm gonna put a divider in, but I'm gonna put it in blue because I think that it'll match better rather than having like dark, dark black lines. Ah, oh, hello, Susan. Welcome to the team with a capital T. Oh, you're part of team Tiny Wins. I remember Erin talking on her stream last night because she's just started um, channel memberships as well, spending a really long time trying to think of the names for hers. And I'm like, yeah, totally feel that because I was like, I want names that are like very specifically cute and like, you know, fit a kind of vibe that I'm going for. So Team Tiny Wins, I'm like, heck to the yes. I love that name. Because we've got what? Tiny Wins, Progress Over Perfection, Moments That Matter. We have Slow and Steady. We have, I can't remember the last one, In It To Win It, heck yeah. And then one that isn't released yet, but I'm like, I've been musing with for quite a while is Action Breeds Action. And that's like another little thing that I like to say. We're also gonna cap this off at the bottom to make it feel a little bit more like complete I guess I guess like you know when you have a table in Excel or on Word or whatever and you give it a header and a footer yeah it just looks a little bit nicer I like the open borders though I think that that looks kind of cute so changes that we have made thus far are obviously using different supplies we've eliminated the black outlines to make it look a little bit like lighter a little bit more I don't know less heavy I suppose we've also capped off the bottom so it looks a little bit more finished in my opinion. So we need the November header. And for this one, we're going to try and use the Fudnoske brush pen, but that means we're going to use a pencil first. <laughs> and I say a November header, we're distinctly not doing November. We decided we were going to do this calendar for June. So I guess like, should we write June because it is June or should we write November because we're trying to do a recreation? I mean, all in all, I'm not using this, like this is in my R&D bullet journal, so it doesn't really matter what I title it, but I feel like for the sake of the recreation, I kind of want a letter in November. I'm not sure. While we think about that, drink break, tink. All right, we've got two for June. All right, we've got four for June. Wow, that's a lot of Junes. June, June, June. <clears throat> Nobody for November. Heck nah, November. <laughs> All right, June. June's not so bad to letter, right? I mean, June would be like thick downstroke on the J and then thin coming up and around and then thicker downstroke for this side of the U, curving up and then thicker downstroke for that side, curving up and then the N would be thicker. I'm obviously not doing a very good job of this. And in... N is one of those tricky ones that I like like to letter, but I'm always very bad at this part here where you have to change directions, especially when you've just come like down thick and going up thin. That one's tricky. No tink. I'm sorry. I was, it doesn't tink as nicely, does it? It's more like a tonk. Tonk. <laughs> Rude discovery. I just finished my tea. I think you gotta get more tea. And then A would come around and over. But in true gist style, oof. That one wasn't so good. We are going to pencil this in first, just to make sure that I get my lettering in a way that is done nicely. Though I will also say that one of the things that past Jess did is that because she was doing photography, we go, eh. hi Gemma. So when I did this lettering, I, I'm just gonna ignore the fact that this one is done completely differently. Any of the gaps I tried to fill in with some little diagonal lines as well, partially probably to like fit in with this, but also just because I felt like it was a little bit more decorative and it hid any mistakes a little bit better. Alrighty. Oh, okay. So now now there's this controversy of no November versus June. We're gonna do it, we're gonna put it to a poll. All right, because Jess is bad at counting. <laughs> so we have November versus June. Let's see. Which month? Dun, dun, dun. While we do that, though, we can probably go and start thinking about the habit tracking. So the habit tracker, I did it so that you'd have to turn the journal to actually use it, which I think is one of the most frustrating ways of doing a, a monthly habit tracker. Because, like, 
anything that makes it more difficult to use, like turning my journal, is just an absolute like, yeah, nah, not about it kind of thing. I also love that I didn't necessarily map out how many habits I needed first, so I have this space at the bottom. And usually if I have space at the bottom, I'll just fill it with something that I know I'm doing because it's like a quick win. I'm like, hey, yeah, like, like make my bed because it happens every day or, you know, <laughs> get up. <laughs> like, I don't know. But I did not do that for this one, so... It's effectively going to be like us continuing this header over and then possibly writing the habits up the side. And then the numbers can be right up against here because I don't like the idea of the title down there either. Alrighty. Contested. Wow. Alrighty. So we have about, about two thirds of people saying that we should do June instead of November. So we're going to go with June and we're going to pencil June in. And I kind of feel like if we're doing an elevated version, Okay, I'm getting myself very, like, worked up about this. It's just a really large amount of space, right? Like, to do a simple calligraphy header of, like, June, that's a lot of space. So, possibly, instead of doing just a regular kind of calligraphy, I suppose, like with the Tombow, do we want to do some kind of, like, a gradient lettering kind of deal? Would that be, like, a little bit more elevated? I mean... If we're trying to bring more of the blue theme into it, I feel like it might be a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit more better. So we would do like J with the Tombow and then blah, 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 which I know you can probably barely see. And then do kind of like the darkened section down the bottom and then darkened again some more. And then do some do some light blending work kind of a thing. This is not good paper for this, but hopefully you can kind of see the vibe we're going for. And then possibly do like an outline with a black pen and like make it kind of a little bit more. That whole idea of elevated, yeah? And of course I'm doing this on a scrappy piece of paper, so we're not doing our best work here. What do you guys reckon? Should we do something like that or should we do something still like just the regular kind of calligraphy? So it's a bit more like true to the original. I guess this comes back to that idea of like, are we doing elevated or are we doing a true recreation? Hmm. And we've also got Team June Vember. Oh gosh. Okay, we're gonna have to put June Vember in a <laughs> in a in a poll, and we're gonna have to put our like regular versus the other one in a poll. All the polls. Alrighty. We're just gonna call it header. So we've got November regular. We've got. November gradient, which I don't know why I'm calling it November. It's not November. We decided it was June. And then we've got Junevember. <laughs> Team Juvember is like getting very passionate about this. Junevember regular, or we have Junevember <laughs> gradient. At least it'll fill more space if we write Junevember. So there is there is that. Alrighty, you have approximately 30-ish seconds to vote on this poll. And if we're going to do that, then at least we'll get to do some more with the grey, because we can do a little drop shadow with it as well, which will look kind of cute. Alrighty. Oof. Alrighty, Junevember is really, really taking the lead here. <laughs> like, some people are just like, Junevember doesn't exist. It must be June. Okay. If we're doing June Vember. So whenever I do gradient lettering, I do typically like to sketch out the full lettering forms rather than just like rather than just the mono line, effectively. Uh, mainly because my brush lettering abilities are limited, but I'll do it like J here. So you can see that as I sketch it in, I say you can see. You probably can't see. Let's let's just turn that down a bit so hopefully you can kind of see it. Yeah, we can see the pencil sketch in here, possibly. So when I put the pencil sketch in, I do like to do the thickened sections so I know roughly where my Tombow has to go in terms of those. So if you're June. In. How do you spell Junevember? Is it with a V? Yes, Junevember. 
Because, like, previous Jess, when she did the V, she did, like, a little curly bit on it, and that's not really how I letter anymore. I mean, I don't use the letter V all that much, but... Oh, we can do a little curly bit. Why not? Because then it can curl over to the E. Are we going to fit it? Yeah, we'll fit it. We can we can make it work. June Vem... M, M can go down, and then B comes up, all the way up. That's something, something that I know I changed. Oh, we're playing with fire here. I don't know if we're going to fit it the whole way across. We might need to fudge it a little bit. B, E, that is really tight. We might move it over. So who's taking up too much space? I think the U is probably taking up too much space. So we can make the U a little bit smaller. Because that, that's just a little bit tight for me. If we're doing a proper recreation where things look nice, yeah, squish. Okay, um, so the M could move over. The U can certainly get a little bit smaller. And the J could also move over a little bit. Which also just takes me through like the entire word again. And I'm like, hmm, how do I feel about that? <laughs> Very squish. So, do I want to just erase it and do it again? No, I really don't, because I think I've done a very nice job of this, apart from it getting very squishy towards the end. So, we'll just redo the J so we know at least where we're starting. Maybe we can just redo it letter by letter. But this is why we pencil first, so that we don't end up with the squish lettering. J... You and there we go. <laughs> that looks a little bit better, doesn't it? it? Makes a little more sense in terms of the spacing. Because yeah, I don't know, like I am very envious of people who can just go straight in with pen on their pages and just be like, "Yep, this is where I want it to be. Everything is dandy." I'm just like, "Yeah, nah, <laughs> that is not how I am." Um, N needs to be more like here because we're really just moving it over by like maybe one grid space kind of a thing but that's enough that's enough to do what we need it to do because U to N we go up a little bit more aggressively we can come down fairly aggressively and I like the N coming up a little bit I am um, I have, I have noticed, though, I have gotten a lot better with my kind of bounce, quote, quote, bounce lettering. But, um, <laughs> someone who doesn't go pencil person and gives you the shits. Lol. <laughs> See, that's the thing. If people can do it and just go in with their pen first and get it to look the way they want it to, I'm just like, more power to you. I am not that way. I uh, very much appreciate having my pencil guidelines. Because, yeah, otherwise things just get cattywampus. They don't end up in the right place. I'll spell something wrong. Heck, sometimes I'll spell something wrong even with the pencil. So there's that too. June, November. I think this is going to work way better. Because now we've got like a full letter worth to play with, which is just nice. <laughs> Do you remember the 23rd night of June, November? I don't actually know that song. Is that the one that goes? I don't know what they're singing. I just know the screech, the little screech. Do 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 do. You usually put the first letter on pencil where you want to start and risk it for the rest. <laughs> Uh, it might be that they bit. Yeah, it could be that they edit out the pencil marks. Um, it could be that. But, um, yeah. Because I know that, like, when we turn the brightness up on my stream, for instance, it becomes a lot harder to see this, to see the pencil marks. Ember. We also don't want this to feel too squashed. Mm. 
And I think I can just erase the rest of the word. Because I know what B-E-R looks like. Burr. Burr. I like that in the first half of the year we have some really good like variation in terms of the length of the words for the months. And then in the second half of the year it's like, no, they will all be long now. Do, 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 do. See, that's N. And M looks like way too small now. I feel like it needs to have some more bounce to it, but we might do that when we uh, letter it in. Bimma step, bimma step, bimma step, bimma step. B. E. R. There we go. That looks pretty cute. Okay, so now as we have the penciling in, we can actually go and start thinking about putting the pen in. Now, one of the issues that we do technically have, if we're going to be going with a very light blue gradient, is that once I put the light blue down, it's going to be very hard to erase the pencil. So I'm going to want to possibly erase some of this pencil, uh, but not too much of the pencil, <laughs> because we still need to have the... Um, guidelines there for me otherwise it's just going to be a hard time see i turn up the brightness and now it looks like i erased some of the pencil but i i haven't so we're just going to very lightly go over this because i don't want to get myself confused so that then we can put the pen down over the top of it or what we could do is we could just decide to go in with a darker kind of gradient so use the blue and then a double pass of the blue and then maybe get some kind of like a darker color in there. I just need to bring in another pen. We might end up doing that anyways, but yeah, I think that a needed eraser would be an excellent choice. I just don't have one, sadly. I have a blob of blue tack, but I don't think that's going to work as well. <laughs> Probably not a good idea. <laughs> so we're, we're going to we'll risk it for the biscuit. We're going to go in with the lighter color. So we're just effectively applying some pressure to where the thicker sections are, thicker sections, and then going lighter with the pressure on the uh, up strokes where we've got the thinner sections. Mm -hmm. And of course this pen is kind of old, so it is a uh, not as, I don't know, sturdy in the nib as I probably would have liked it to have been, but it's all good. V curves around. I will say that if you're practicing your brush lettering, like you know what the letter forms are supposed to look like for whatever you're trying to do, but you're not very good at the actual kind of like handling of the pen, sketching things in first can be a very good way to practice because you give yourself the guidelines that you need to say like, hey, this is where the pen actually needs to go but you then just go over the top of it with your pen and practice applying the different amounts of pressure. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have that dumb song stuck in my head and I don't even know the actual words, which is just helpful, super, super helpful. There we go, and we go down, and we're gonna do a little tail. Hey, <laughs> little tail, yeah, little tail. Now, as it stands, you can't, I don't know, is that in focus? Oh, wow, I'm sorry, I didn't turn off my autofocus. So here is what we've got so far, very, very pale blue. But that's good, because it means that we can erase the pencil lines and hopefully have, like, nice lettering forms left behind. We might need to tidy them up a little bit, but note how I'm holding the edge of my page here, because if I don't do that, I'll end up doing that thing where you, like, erase and it, like, pulls the page, which is uh, not not the business. We don't want that. We're going to get all of this pencil off so that we can see our letter forms unobstructed. And then also it means that if I end up putting more pen over the top, uh, I hopefully don't have to deal with trying to erase pencil lines that are underneath pen because that doesn't work as well. <laughs> oh, so beautiful. I love it. So this is only the first layer though. As we said, we want to do kind of like uh what's the word gradient that's one so different shades uh one of those shades is probably just going to be a double up of the blue that we already have possibly i don't know how much the color builds for this one but 
typically when I do a gradient, more often than not, I make it so the light color is on the top and then the darker color is on the bottom. That is just the typical for me. Um, I'll have the Jess erase the sound in your head when you're like, <laughs> so yeah, because I like the lightest color on top, we're effectively going to leave that as it is, and we're just going to build color up underneath that. So part of that will be doubling up the color with our 491, and then part of it will be bringing in the 452 to add that more saturated blue towards the bottom, and we'll have like double layers of that as well. Also, drink break. Tink! The only time I remember to have a drink break is when I can feel my throat being like, you need water or you need to cough. <laughs> the E connects here. So we're just leaving the top section pretty much as is and going over the lower section. And I will say if you're in a thin paper notebook, uh, doing this too many times can lead to scandal things like bleed through ghosting all of that kind of stuff. But we're working in an archer and olive, so we are going to be pretty safe. Do, do, do. And then once we've done the color build up, yeah, which is kind of like the main basis of the gradient, then we will do some outlining to make it kind of pop a little bit more. And we'll also add in some highlights using like a white gel pen just to make it look a little bit more three dimensional. And we'll also probably go in and do a drop shadow because, again, it just like adds another layer of visual interest. I also try to be a little bit varied with where I bring my different sections of color to so that then it doesn't look like it kind of all ends at like one <laughs> one line, which you can do, um, especially if you're still just practicing, right? Like, so it could be that like two dot grid spaces down, like anything that touches that line under it is one color, uh, but I'm trying to be a little bit more varied in it because my letters are kind of bouncy. They go to different places. And I kind of want to have every letter form have some of the darker color, some of the lighter color, so on and so forth. <laughs> Things angrily. There we go. Our little B here. And oh, we'll just do that part two. This is the thing, gradient lettering. I, I love watching uh, like the time-lapse lettering videos, but I also feel like they give the f false impression that this stuff doesn't take as long as it does. <laughs> it's not a slow process, but I do think it is very pretty. cute. So that is us building up the second layer of color. So hopefully you can kind of see that the top is much, much fainter uh, versus the one underneath it. Um, now I think we're going to bring in the, this guy. Yeah. Um, now, previously on gradient lettering, we were using a super light colored pen. So if we went outside of the boundaries, it wasn't going to be so much of a problem. Like, once we put in the black outline and stuff, it wasn't really going to be a, a, a big deal. This guy, on the other hand, if we go outside of the guidelines, is going to be a lot more noticeable, and then we're going to have to try and fix it. We don't want to try and fix it because, you know, we're recreating the first bullet journal layout. We don't fix mistakes. We just fret about them. So, <laughs> no, okay. I do um, want to make sure that this looks fairly nice, though. So we do want to take our time with it. Uh, and just lightly bring that up here, blend its way down. We also need to be kind of careful with the blending part of this because one of the things that I wanted to do for the darker section in particular was use like a double pass through to be the kind of um, darkened section. So I might actually do that as we go, possibly. So first pass through on the top kind of section and then a slightly darkening up on the bottom which is probably really hard for you guys to see <laughs> because my hand is over it. But hopefully that kind of makes sense. I might also at some point change to using the uh, bullet tip just because my beautiful pen here is slightly frayed on the end given excessive use. 
and I would rather not uh, mess up where I want the pen to go because I'm using a pen that has a frayed end. Do, 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 do. There we go. Cute. And it might be that we bring in another colour. <laughs> we don't fix mistakes, we just fret about them. <laughs> The thing I will say about using a frayed brush tip end, though, like this, is that although it is a little harder to control, it is a lot easier to get very, like, delicate blending rather than, like, a more harsh line because you can kind of just, like, touch the frayed bit down and use that to do very fine lines up the page, which is kind of nice. Uh, but in terms of actually controlling where it goes, that's kind of its downfall. <laughs> this is looking cute so far though. I, I always find that like it's one of those kind of trust the process things like as you build things up it looks better and better and then when you add your final touches in it's like ah oh, this is what I was striving for. Do, 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 do. It's been a, quite a while since I've done gradient lettering in my journal. and I've kind of mused with doing it in various recent setups like I was musing with doing it in my May setup and then I mused with doing it in my June setup, which I've actually already finished. Um, but I haven't gotten around to actually doing it again recently. Maybe we can bring it into my July theme. That's a little while away. Don't even think about July yet, Jessica. <laughs> in... Good things take some time. Because I was kind of thinking about it. I'm like, oh, what? If we're doing a recreation of my first setup, it's going to take, like, no time at all because it was a really simple setup. And I'm like, no, we're going with the elevated version, the hardcore version. The I want to impress my friends version. <laughs> so we talked about it a little bit before. But if you end up with any kind of like too harsh lines I suppose in your gradient um, especially for where we're adding this like very saturated blue on top of a very soft blue you can go in after the fact and do a little bit of blending uh, just by kind of pulling the color up with that other pen that you had uh, like it is like it is we might do a little bit of that at the end but for now we're just going to continue with our darker blue sections I say darker it's still like a very bright Kind of, you know, what most people would consider a light blue, but compared to the very pastel one that we were using before, it is a little bit more on the darker side. The dark side. Okay, flick that up, but not all the way, because that goes into a light section. I will say that if you're doing the, um, if you're doing the gradient in stripes, yeah, um, uh-oh, I think I might have marked a different one. Oh, no. There we go. Thank you. Managing standard. Standard. Save. Cool. Hopefully that hopefully that worked. Yeah, okay. What was I saying? I can't remember. Uh, nope. It's completely gone. Oh, well. Must not have been that important. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. So if you're doing your gradient lettering, right, and you're doing it kind of in striped sections or like um, bars, yeah, of, of gradient, it is a little bit easier to know where to stop, whereas with my style that I'm doing here, um, because each of the letter forms, I wanted to have that gradient in it, you've kind of got, like, this section here in particular, where this side of the B, the, the dark blue section comes up to, you know, here, yeah, do it with your pen. That's a really good idea, Jess. It's a recipe for disaster. The dark part of the blue comes up to here on this side, but only comes up to here on that side because I wanted there to be a light section here, which means that we have this very quick blending that's going to happen on this kind of, like, upturn of the B. So, hmm. Hmm. Let's do a little blend here. A little blend. Da -da -da. That's fine for now. That's cute. Little A, little A. And same idea here. 
go that looks pretty good now like we said we were going to do some blending of the darker section into the lighter section just using the light pen and the reason we use the light pen here is because as you go over the darker sections it will um just pick up a little bit of that color and kind of like blend it into the section that's above it which is nice uh doesn't need to be heaps and if you find that your pen just isn't picking up enough color what you can do is use something like an acrylic block and uh, just draw some of the darker color on the acrylic block and then pick it up with your lighter color pen uh, i'm not going to do that today because i don't think it's like super necessary for what we're doing here but it is just a tool or a little tip that you can use if need be. I think that that's looking pretty cute. I mean, we could go and add some darkening in at the bottom. I don't know if it's super necessary. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our outline. When I outline, I like to use the thinnest black pen possible, <laughs> usually. But more than that, I usually just like to use my Muji. Uh, the what the 0.38. Um, it's fine, but it's also a ballpoint pen, so it can withstand my heavy handedness. What I will say, though, is that this is not a waterproof pen. So if I want to go in after the fact and add more color, I do need to be careful. Yeah, but we're going to do that. Um, so with the outlining, this is a nice opportunity to kind of disguise any possible, uh, <laughs> not like mistakes, but places where you kind of went outside the lines and stuff like that. Uh, in particular, where you went outside the lines with the lightest color pen. So we are going to do, we're going to make sure that there's no ink on the end of it first, because sometimes it balls up. And I also find that sometimes the end, it doesn't like unscrew, but it gets a little like loose. And then the pen starts to get very, uh, gloopy because of it which i don't know is a weird connection to have but it's fine so for our outlining we're taking it slow and steady and we're just outlining the entire letter form i know for a lot of people who do journaling it'd be like wow this is way too much effort absolutely not whereas for others it's like oh this looks like a fun kind of like either challenge or just a kind of like relaxing process of building up colors and then outlining and stuff and getting some more decoration onto the page either way is fine both styles are accepted here <laughs> but i will say that putting the outline in just really helps to make the letter forms pop a little bit more we like contrast or at least jess likes contrast jess likes contrast having the contrast between the like kind of bright vibrancy of the letters versus the black i'm just like ah oh, yes that's what i like you're currently browsing for posca pens oh no <laughs> disco vibes in the stream nice there we go so and i also find that part of the outlining process that is tricky for me is actually outlining what I've done versus kind of like making up the letters as I go. Uh, Cause you know, you, your hand is like, oh, I know how to draw a U and it just does whatever it wants to do. And I'm like, that's not necessarily what we had on the page and thus doesn't really match up with what we've been drawing out. So making sure that we are not letting our brain go on autopilot, actually outlining what we've got here um, or the letter forms that we wanted to, you know, have versus what the brain thinks that it can do otherwise the penciling in was pointless Splat. and it is okay if while we're drawing them out we uh leave some white spaces or whatnot because we can just go in after the fact and color them in like that's totally fine what's more of a problem is if you cut into the letter as you're outlining because then you have blue, in this case, outside of the outline, and that's not what we want. We want the blue contained. We want it inside the black outline. Do, do, do. I'm going to have this song stuck in my head all day. It's problematic. What's this? Okay, that's a good question. And I'm not trying to get it stuck in your head. But the question is, what, what is the song that often gets stuck in your head? 
Uh, and it could be like a more recent one because sometimes these things change. Um, or it could be one that just kind of like returns to you over and over again. My current song that keeps getting stuck in my head is the cheese tax <laughs> like with the with the doggo where it's like, you know, when you open the fridge door, the puppy comes running because it's like, oh, it's time to pay the cheese tax kind of a thing. Um, and then the other one is this song about bees being outside. It's like, oh, what a lovely day, day. I'm going to stay inside because outside that is where the bees are hiding. They're among the trees. They're plucked sharpening their knives the bees are coming for you and so that one gets stuck in my head quite a lot uh and also it's corn yeah. it's corn he's got the juice he's got the juice <laughs> yeah that one and what's the other one that's recently stuck in my head okay recently i've got another one stuck in my head that was called the teeny weeny beanie i think it was on jimmy fallon i had paul rudd in it um it was like all about how it's like oh yeah i've got a outside it's cold and stuff and I want something to put on my head and rah rah oh look it's a teeny weeny beanie teeny weeny beanie <laughs> like that's a good song it's dumb but I like it <laughs> sweet Caroline yes sweet Caroline beep, beep, beep. there you go the Bluey theme song. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen. I I haven't ever seen Bluey, so I think I'm safe from that one. But can can imagine that would be a bit of a danger zone. Danger zone. The Baby Shark, excellent song. Oh, Guardians of the Galaxy. You got creep stuck in your head. Like what? Like I'm a creep. Like that one. Oh, you know. What the hell am I doing here? Do, 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 do. I can't not finish it. <laughs> Vogel always gives me shit for that. It's like, uh, he'll he'll start singing a lyric or something like that, and then I'll let some time pass, and then he'll hear me very quietly, just finish it off. He's like, I knew you couldn't leave it. I knew you couldn't just let it be. I'm like, no, it was unfinished. It must be finished. It'll be like going like, baby shark, doo doo doo. I'm like, no, nah, that makes me uncomfortable. Don't like it. <laughs> it needs to be finished off. See, I have the problem with, okay. There was a, a song, a version of Baby Shark that they did, which wasn't the, the kind of, I'm going to say the right version. It was like somebody else was trying to do it to get a video that was big. I don't know. But it was it was a different version. And instead of going baby shark do 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 it went baby shark do 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 and I get that stuck in my head more often. And I don't think that's even necessarily the version that they had, but that's the way that I now kind of default to singing it. And that's all because somebody that I worked with at the time that Baby Shark came out, that was the version that they were playing for their kids. So that's the way that they would sing it. And I remember being so annoyed <laughs> because I was like, that's not how you do it. It's not the right way. It's not the baby shark way. And now it's stuck in my head. <laughs> but I think it also kind of gets... Uh, mixed in with like a different um uh a different like jingle that's probably from a, a tv ad yeah sometimes sometimes there's like the, the the trigger words or something like uh i'm trying to think of one now No, I'm not going to be able to think of one. Because there are, t I totally get what you have. Like, there's, there's sometimes, like, people will say something in a conversation and it automatically goes to a song in your mind. I completely get that feeling. It's like when people can play, like, the first note of um, Black Parade and everyone's like, oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> you can say you're welcome. Do 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 do
do. I also get that with shiny. Shiny. Alrighty, so this one kind of came a little bit far away, which you might not really be able to see from that distance. Let's see if we can closer inspections. Boom. So you can see, hopefully, possibly, there's a little bit of a white space between that one. So we're going to go and fill that in. But <laughs> Junevember is looking great. <laughs> I mean, because it's not a real word, I look at this and it looks like a puddle of garbage. But like, <laughs> in terms of what the, the writing is, not, not the lettering. I think we've done a very good job on the lettering. Okay, a little bit, little bit of color. Hopefully that fades. Yas for Junevember. Snaps for Junevember. All right. So we had a very simple header. We've now made it a little bit more decorative, which is pretty. We are going to add a drop shadow. I am not that great at drop shadows. So typically what I will do when I want to do a uh, drop shadow is I'll actually just go into Word and I'll do it there. First of all, we have to celebrate. Yay! Thank you, Nicole, for becoming part of our team with a capital T. Bam! It is such a great thing to have you as part of Team Tiny Wins. Pa. Exciting stuff. Yay! So let's go have a look. In terms of, yeah, doing a drop shadow, if we go to a new document. Okay, stop being aggressive at me. Yes, okay. Thank you, thank you. New document. And if we write, we're just going to write November in the document. And we're going to make it bigger so that you guys can see it. And I know you can't see it yet, but it is coming. Don't, don't you worry. Um, and we're also going to change it to a, a different font. No, I need something that's scripty. Okay. I'm going I'm to show you what I'm doing now so that it doesn't feel like I'm just ignoring you because that's not, that's not the business. Uh, window, this one. Okay. So we have our little November here. And we're going to find a font that, like, Mystical World's brush script. No, that looks weird. Um, we need something that is scripty, though. Baguette script. There we go. That looks a little bit more akin to what we've got here. So if we make that bigger so we can see. Because I'm not so good at drop shadows, I'll often just go into the font menu and try and find one that allows for a drop shadow. If it doesn't, uh, let's see. Strike through, double strike through, subscript, blah, blah, blah. Where do we find this kind of thing? It's obviously been a, a second since I did this. Drop down list, drop cap. Do you guys remember word art? Word art was like so much easier. <laughs> Not that we have word art anymore. Word art, no. Goodbye word art. Oh, insert word art. Okay. Your text here, done, excellent. I knew we could do it somewhere. November. Okay. And for this word art, we need to go and find a, oh gosh, what have I done? What are you? Shape format, text outline, text effects. We want a shadow and we want the shadow to be to that direction is usually what I would do. So it's effectively just playing around with that kind of stuff to see where the shadow would actually get placed. Um, or what I would do is I would open it up in Photoshop and just make a duplicate, which is also kind of easy. The font that we were using was Baguette Script. Baguette Script. Alrighty, let's see. Let's see if I can do it in, in, in Photoshop to make it a little easier. I mean, I know not everybody has Photoshop, so that doesn't really help people very much. Uh, dun, 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 dun. It there and we'll share the screen so that you guys can again see what we're doing so we will type in november if i can remember how to spell oh actually we can just do june november can't we come on that was a bit silly and we're going to use the font that we were using before which we said was baguette script right bag 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 do i even have it here bag oh no i don't even have baguette script on this one devastation all righty we need another one. Why are there so many options? Probably because I download way too many fonts. <laughs> like, constantly. Um, we just need something fairly simple. It doesn't need to be actually, like, in keeping perfectly with what we're doing. It just needs to be something that's kind of thicker so that we can really see what it looks like. I'm effectively just going through and looking at all of the sample fonts here so that I can see roughly what they would look like. 
we're gonna just do this one. We're gonna turn it into black so you guys can actually see what we're doing though, because otherwise it's a little bit hard. Okay, so we've got June Vember, and we're gonna pretend that well, calm down. We're gonna pretend that it is roughly the type of lettering we're looking for. Because it's got kind of a similar, similar style to it. And I'm just gonna duplicate that so that then I have two of them. And then I can uh wait, something rude. Then I can offset the one that's lower. So the one that is higher at the moment, we'll just change this to be a lighter gray color. There we go. Put it behind, and then we can offset it. So then by offsetting it, you can kind of see where your highlights need to do, um, or in, where they need to go, because I often do a, a highlight that drops like lower to the right. So anytime I try and do a highlight that's in any other direction, I will either go and find a font kind of generator or whatever that will allow me to see where the backdrop would be, or I'll drop it into Word and use their like text art, or I'll drop it into Photoshop like this and then just like make duplicates of it. Um, so I can kind of see where I would end up putting that. So it's like if I want to do a drop shadow to that side, I can kind of see where it would get positioned. But as said, I want to do a lower to the right drop shadow. So mine's going to look something like that, roughly. But anywho, that's just that's just to help myself out. We should be okay to do this one because, as said, it is like more of my kind of typical or the one that I would typically tend towards. So it's just putting it down the right-hand side, slightly lower. Wee. And it doesn't need to be a lot, but just putting it even in like a very light gray does make it look a little bit more elevated. In fact, I would recommend using a lighter gray because then if you stuff up, it's not super, super noticeable. <laughs> Indeed, folks like, <laughs> Virgil knows what's what. We're doing, we're doing some drop shadowing. It's also important to make sure that, like, while you go through and do your drop shadow, don't go over your beautiful blue sections with your grey pen, because it does make them look quite a bit more dull, and that's not what we want. We just put all this beautiful blue lettering in because we want a beautiful blue lettering. Not sad grey. Oh my gosh. I think that, I think greys can be happy, though. We can have a happy grey. <laughs> Do, 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 do. That's looking pretty cute. Yeah, for sure. If you have Canva, because well, Canva is free, you can use that because they have a uh, drop shadow feature for their lettering, which is a very good suggestion. Excellent. There we go. That's looking cute. Oh. Vogel ran away, but when he comes back, I'll let him know that we said hi. So this is looking pretty swell. We're going to add in a little highlight with a white pen because we're feeling a little extra today, obviously. So just doing kind of a stripe down one side usually is what I will do, and then like a couple of dots, and just putting that on pretty much any thickened section. So any downstroke is going to get one of these because it's cute. And you can't see it very well on camera, possibly, but it does look quite good in person. Nice. Ah, beautiful June Vember. So our monthly log probably took me about the same amount of time as it did the first time I set it up, but <laughs> we have much nicer lettering style and also this cute banner that doesn't have any kind of black outlines, which I guess wouldn't have been so bad to have because we have a black outline on our header text, but, but still, but still. Gorgeous, so happy. Alrighty, so for the, um, what Shimmer calls it? Yeah, Canva is the bee's knees for sure. Oh, of course, tink, drink break. Excellent. So for our habit tracker, we're effectively going to be doing the same thing over here. We're going to make it vertical rather than horizontal um, because that was just <laughs> not my kind of party. So we don't need any uh, signifiers down the side. So we can just go in with our 30. Did I highlight? Yep, I highlighted the weekends again. So 30, 29, 
28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21. I love how I put a black dot on every single one of the dot grid spaces in there so that I can kind of like, I guess how you have a guideline for coloring in my, uh, my habit completion, but I'm like the dot grid was already there and putting those dots in took such a long time. So well, I'm not necessarily opposed. I would not really bother to do it again if I'm honest it just takes a lot of time for not a huge amount of payoff in my opinion um it's five four three two and one and we'll put it in the oh see so, you know I said I didn't need to put it there but I still did it <laughs> maybe we can just use this as a space to denote like oh this is like a day that you can like fully completed your habits and we can tick it off and feel good about ourselves there we go that seems like a fair fair reason to have the stuff done the way we did have it all righty weekend monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday weekend or i could just read them i'll look at 17 and 18 and 24 and 25 <laughs> yeah use the work we've already done to help us with the work that we're doing now oh waiting for the monster's caffeine to kick in nice Yes, I'm, I always look forward to my first Coke of the day. It's just I'm trying to start with water first because if I start with, if I just go with Coke Zero first, I'm not going to drink any straight water because I'll just be like, but I could just have more Coke Zero. But if I kind of say to myself, okay, we're going to drink a full liter of water before we have the Coke Zero, then I'll actually get my liter of water in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So we are going to want to do that banner again. Maybe. Are we going to want to do the banner? I mean, like, yes, to keep in with the setup that we've actually done, because it is a recreation. But if I was doing a vertical habit tracker, I would probably want to put my habits in there. But then if I don't have the banner, it doesn't look like it matches. We're going to put the banner in. We'll figure, we'll figure it out as we go along. Okay. So we are going to put in the... Put in the blue horizontal line, the one that goes across here. So we'll get rid of this guy. Now, Miss where you said that you were changing the orientation of the habit tracker. We said it quite a bit ago. It was, like, probably towards the start of the stream, just because we're doing the elevated version. And to me, elevated means, like better looking and more functional and having to turn my journal to use a habit tracker is not a functional thing for me that's just like a boho berry did it so i did it kind of thing <laughs> like it's a valid way to do your habit tracker like especially if you want to be able to read your habits and then see them like there with the numbers of the days of the week or whatnot but sorry realize you can't see what i see uh but this orientation for the tracker is not as user-friendly to me personally. I think we are what we repeatedly do. Oh, look at me, adding little quotes in. So cute. Maybe we'll put that in instead of a habit tracker header up the top or something. We are going to need some tape. Where did I put my tape? There you are. So I guess possibly what we'll do is we'll have... We'll have this banner for one thing and then we're going to probably put in some horizontal and vertical lines to signify where you would put in the habits yeah 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 we remember the sideways habit trackers the days of yesteryear in times past it's quite kind of cool I guess and maybe not so much in my journals because I, I don't know am difficult like that and like to go against the grain um <laughs> but like looking through kind of eras of bullet journaling and like how things have changed over time or like what was popular versus what is popular now or you know, popular things in days gone past and the horizontal habit tracker or like the turn your book habit tracker was certainly one of the popular things or like when we got into doing gratitude logs that were really just kind of lettering pages, that one was one that was popular. Or when everybody was doing lavender themes. <laughs> like, 
And now I'm just like, nope, not going to do a lavender theme because of that. I've been completely put off. Um, what else? What other kind of bullet journaling trends have we kind of seen in terms of that? I think it's easier to see it in terms of like page design and aesthetic um, rather than, I guess, maybe other elements, question mark, question mark. But yeah. Ah, hello to British Columbia and hello to Illinois. It's a pleasure to have you guys with us. We are color, color, coloring in. Yeah, I'm trying to think of other ones that we've had, eh? Whole month sideways. Yeah, go for your life. I've seen some people, I mean, very rarely use their journal more, more like um, this orientation, like that's how they do it <laughs> but, but uh it is not a common thing to do cactus themes yep cactus themes for sure the rise of different journals yes for the everyday journal that is fair like or rise of other journals compared to the everyday journal or like you know phasing out of just having everything in one book to having multiple books see i've i think right now we are in the rise of the reading journal stage it feels like and i know it's not true but it feels like Everybody who became a bullet journaler is now just making reading journal content. <laughs> and again, I know that's not true, um, but like if the shoe fits, <laughs> we do seem to have quite a few uh, at the moment, quite a few creators that are doing reading journals, um, which is not a bad thing, you know, again, like it's not bad that people wanted to do a lavender or a cactus theme in their journal either. We are very much team, you do you boo, your journal is for you and we want to make it work for you. It's just interesting to see how these things like come and go in terms of phases. Yeah, I turn my pages sideways to write it all. Yeah, no, I, I do that too often when I'm, when I'm on camera. I write like this because I want you guys to be able to see things. Uh, but when I write for myself, I usually turn my notebook like that to do my writing. There we go. Beautiful. So we've got our little banner there, which is looking cute. Cute. And we're going to assume that this version of Jess would track a full page of things. You know why? Because she does. That's what she do. So we're going to do some lines because we love some lines and we're going to do vertical and horizontal because then you get the cross hatch kind of thing going and then it's a little easier to see where everything lines up so we'll do some vertical ones and this version of Jess she can either color in the intersection or she can tick it off and cross it off yeah um so in previous Jess's version of a notebook, you know, the one that we're kind of recreating today. We just put all of those bloody black dots on the dot grid and then we had the sections in between them get colored in or crossed off um, depending on what was happening. So we would cross it off if it was a, uh, what you call it? Cross it off if it was a day that you didn't have to do the habit, yeah? Because sometimes habits don't actually want to be done every day that one went a little cattywampus i do find that sometimes these vertical lines are a little bit tricky because of the pen loop my hand gets like caught on it and then it goes a little bit skew if but that's okay um but yeah so i would use little diagonal lines like this clonk sorry to say like hey we don't need to do that on these days and that's because this was the weekend and i didn't want to get up before 7 a.m on the weekend Oh, yes. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if we see new reading journals in 2024. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested to see, um, like, the people who started reading journals this year in particular, if they continue with reading journals in 2024, um, and possibly how many people take it up because they've seen it this year um, on on the social medias. I don't know. And it's one of those things, I'm like, I'm not judging. Like, you know, if you want a reading journal, go for your life. I think they're freaking beautiful. Like, I would love a reading journal. I just, I know that for what I would want the reading journal to be, I don't have the patience, I guess, or I'm not willing to dedicate the time to it effectively. Because it's not that I don't have the time. Like, I've got time. It's just I want to use my time for other stuff. 
um, isn't there like a quote that says like in any moment we're doing exactly what we want to be doing? <laughs> and and it's, you know, it's not doesn't necessarily hold in the most extreme of cases, but I can't quite remember what the quote actually is. It's like right now I'm doing this live stream because I want to be here with you guys doing this live stream. But if I had like, you know, said, hey, we're actually only going to do this first page, then maybe I'd be doing something else. But I'm like, no, this is what I want to be doing right now. So that's why I'm doing it. I'm rambling, <laughs> but at least I'm on task rambling. <laughs> um, but yeah, like reading journals, absolutely gorgeous. Totally love them. I just know that to execute on it in the way that I would want it to be done, I am not going to put that level of effort in at this current stage of my life. But maybe. We'll see. I've got my notebook picked out. I know which one I'm using if I make a reading journal. But that's a future me problem. This is looking cute. I, I much prefer having these kind of, I guess, guidelines, I guess you could say, for where different <laughs> habits go. It's like, hey, this habit is everything on this blue line. This day is everything on this blue line. It's just a little bit nicer. It's user-friendly. And we're going to put in that vertical blue line so that it matches nicely. We love a matchy-matchy. And I think that's part of the issue that I take with this first setup is that, like, yes, we have repeated elements. Like, we've got the blue and silver, well, gray, question mark. We've got the uh, banners on the original, but on the original, we have them in different orientations. So, like, a horizontal versus a vertical. Nah. <laughs> There you go. Oh yeah, you like fancy stuff for your reading journal, yeah? So your third reading journal and you've read upwards of 100 books a year. Wow, that's impressive. Uh, yeah. I love I love the people who do like the fancy kind of page designs and stuff for them and they kind of like, you know, uh, design it in a way that kind of mimics like either like the theme or aesthetic of the book and stuff. And I'm just like, oh, I want that, but I don't need to do that. Hey. I had the question asked, so I'm allowed to leave and go and get another notebook. <laughs> so I have not opened it yet. It's wrapped in the plastic. But if I do a reading journal, this is the notebook that I'm going to use because it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Um, this one is from the Quirky Cup Collective, I think. Uh, they're in Australia. They're an Australian brand. And absolutely beautiful though like oof and it's got like the gold gilding on the edge and it's got like the magic starts here on the back which I think is funny because it's like the magic starts here but it's the end of the book question mark but I love it this is absolutely gorgeous but I'm not I'm not starting one yet so we're putting it away <laughs> but I'm like if I, if I start one, that's the notebook that I'm going to use. I just need to also do my review video for that notebook because I kind of got that first. Yeah, I know, right? A company that puts a design on the whole cover. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, like, I like the idea of whole cover designs, obviously, because I've got that notebook. Um, but I also kind of just like having, like, the little emblem as well. Like, I don't know. I just like notebooks. <laughs> So in the habit tracker, we would tick and cross to say like whether we've done or not done something. And then we would have uh, the habits written out either as icons or as labels. If we were doing labels, then we'd probably fill it with this space. So maybe we'll go do that. We'll put some some fake habits in. Um, you guys let me know what habits should we put on our fake habit tracker. Also, round of applause. Yay, Bridget has become a YouTube member. Welcome to Team with Capital T. Bam. And oh, you're in progress of perfection. I love that. Uh, it's also called Team Pop because it's like progress of a perfection, P-O-P, Team Pop. <laughs> so we need some fake habits for this person. I'm going to say that one of their fake habits, because it needs to fit in this little space here, so it can't be like a super, super long habit either. And we need some of them. How many do we need? There we go. Drank water before Coke Zero. So H2O before Coke Zero. Good habit. What a, what a positive way to start. Excellent. We're also going to have... Um, 
woke up. <laughs> Waking up is always a good habit to have. Alrighty. We're going to have, hmm, what other habits could we put in here? Oh, daily walks. Excellent idea. Daily walk and then in brackets we write to the fridge, right? <laughs> What a, what a positive way to start their day. They're going to have some water before they cook zero. They're going to get up. They're going to brush their teeth. Love that. Alrighty. Brush teeth. We're going to oop, floss. Excellent idea. I used to be good at flossing and now I'm not so bad. Oh, practice juggling. Yep, we need to do that. We need juggling practice. Otherwise, how are they going to run away and join the circus if they can't juggle? Like, come on. Bed before 11 p.m. All right, we'll put that here. That one can be at the end because it's at the end of the day. I always like to kind of order my habits in order of, like, when I would, like, do them. So bed by 11 p.m. Very sensible. All righty. Good morning. <laughs> oh, no eating out all month. All right, we'll put that here. No eating out. There we go. Good job for them. Um, found a geocache. Nice. Alrighty. So find a geocache. Constantly hunting. Alrighty. Reading. Fundamental. Love that. Alrighty. What else should we have? We can oh, clean the litter boxes. Yes. Because we're tidy kiwis. Done. Excellent. Oh, yep. Get your Pokemon Go streak. It has been such a hot minute since I've played Pokemon Go. Like, I haven't played since, like, they were giant battery socks. <laughs> I don't know if they still are, but, like, you know, it could happen. Pokemon streak. And we want to do bullet journal time. Bujo time. Bujo time. <laughs> like, had a nap. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's good for us. Hopefully the having a the nap happens after the waking up. Uh hug self throughout the day. Self hugs. I literally just gave myself a hug because I read that. <laughs> self hug. Oh yep, medications. All right. They need their medications. safe. Alrighty, how many more do we have? Oh, did not start a fire. No fire starting. And then after that we'll put yes fire starting, right? And they can be in like combat with each other. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> did not start a fire. Did a little dance. Did a little dance. We did a little dance. Love that. No negative talk. <laughs> Sing ja ja ja. <laughs> oh, no negative talk. Does a candle start as fire starting? I think that does. If this person lights a candle, they can't tick off their habit tracker. No negative talk. Especially no negative self talk. Alrighty. You set yourself on fire once for kicking tater tots. Oh no, no, don't do that. That's a bad way to cook tater tots. <laughs> like... Alrighty, we're gonna do a little dance. Make a little love. And then get down tonight. go and we're also gonna have be a wizard if you're on the replay and you got to this point in our replaying then let me know in the comments by saying that you are a wizard because you are indeed a wizard be a wizard and of course if you're here on the live and you want to be a part of the wizard plan then you're allowed to tell that too you can tell me that you're a wizard in the chat <laughs> i'm a wizard I know how sick that Vogel, like, gets of me being, like, I do something, like, that's mildly, like, good kind of a thing. Like, I don't know. Yeah, practice bagpipes. Honestly, what's an example? Okay, so I'm going to write this out and then I'm going to think of one for you. Practice 
magpies. Baby. Yay, we have a wizard. Dee, 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 dee. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yes, yes. We're all wizards. Exactly. Indeed. <laughs> so, like, I'll do something that's, like, mildly good. Like, maybe I'll, like, you know when you're cutting something and your your scissors like glide through the paper, he'll be like that. That'll happen. He'll be like, oh, that'd be cool. I'll be like, yeah, you know why? He'll be like, why? I'm like, cause I'm a wizard. <laughs> like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Disco wizards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't even know what counts as disco music. Yes, we have so many wizards. Like, yay! We have Melinda the wizard, and we have Valeria. Valeria the wizard. Huzzah! We have Yanez being a wizard. It's okay. I mean, I ain't a Harry. I'm a Jess. I'm a wizard. <laughs> Wizard Jess, mm, deal with it. <laughs> this is looking cute though. So we've got our habits, that's looking cool. We had a quote on the first one that says, we are what we repeatedly do. So because this is a recreation, I'm gonna tuck it in there. I'm gonna do it in this. We are what we we are what we repeatedly do heart because we had space for it then i'm going to color it in so we've got space for it <laughs> beautiful yay what a nice recreation that is i think it looks good also Tink, wizard drink break. Nice. Okay, so this is looking cute. We have our monthly log with space to put in those little signifiers to say that things have happened. We have our habit tracker, which we also have a place to signify when things have happened. Um, oops. <laughs> Love it. How many wizards we have. So excellent. Um, so... That's looking good. The next one that we said we were going to recreate because we're doing like a little recreation of this kind of setup. We're not going to do the dailies because they, I don't know, they build as you go. So it doesn't feel like it warrants a recreation, even though this is one of my favorite pages in my bullet journal of all time, but it's fine. Um, we're going to do this one. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to do a recreation of this, but elevated. So more like akin to our new one. Uh, which means we're going to need the spacing, which is fine. Like, I know what the spacing on that is. We're going to do this part as well. So we're going to just put it to the side so I can kind of keep it as a reference. And we're going to go through and do that. So first part we're going to do is we're going to do the line work. And for that line work, we're going to use our, this guy, whatever his name is. I feel like we need to bring in some more of the theme that we had originally. Uh, so like the, the, what, what's that word that I'm looking for? The candy stripe kind of uh, header piece. I feel like that's kind of not like necessary to bring in, but one of the things that I like to do to make all of my pages in my setups look cohesive is actually have these kind of repeated elements throughout all of the pages so that they all kind of tie together nicely. Um, and that was something that it took a long while for me to realize. Um, so I didn't necessarily know it at this point in time. I was kind of trying to stick with blue as the color palette, uh, or blue and silver, or blue and gray kind of a thing, but it didn't necessarily translate super well. I also had just gotten my mild liners at this point, I'm pretty sure, um, or very recently to this. So I uh, was using those in my notebook as well. Twicky, twicky, twicky. Oh, your push notifications made you miss the start. I do try and set up a... Um, a an event on discord at least so that people kind of know when it's coming i don't know if you can set discord to give you notifications about when things are starting but um that is something that i've started doing i've also started doing it for facebook but i'm not as consistent in that <gasps> oh yay yeah we have a new member round of applause Bujo and bijou Bijou, is that how we say it? I'm still excited. Welcome to Teen Tiny Wins. It is such a pleasure to have you as part of the team with a boom, capital T. Ah, yes. So, okay, you get notifications for the events. That's good to know. 
congratulations on being part of the team. We are very excited to have you with us. Um, and I hope that you look forward to and enjoy your perks as being part of part of the team with a capital T. Wow, wow, I actually need to check up my uh, schedule for releases in terms of my team member perks because I'm not slacking, but I don't know what's going on. <laughs> now, if we scoot this into the middle, you can kind of see that uh, this guy here, the brain dump space, doesn't line up with the Friday space, and that irks me. It gives me zee-heebie-jeebies. So we are instead going to put that one line higher so that it actually sits where I want it to sit. And we're also going to drop these guys two lines lower so that they line up with this. I think that will just look a little bit better. <laughs> don't even want to tell you how long it took me to figure it out though. <laughs> yeah, technically challenged. I completely understand. I think it's also not like super intuitive because to join a membership on um, YouTube, you know, if anybody was wondering, um, there's the join button underneath a, a video for people who have channel memberships. But it, because the button sounds like says join, it makes it feel very final. It's like, if I press this button, I've done the thing. Whereas what actually happens is when you press the join button, it gives you a kind of like blurb or description of what the memberships offer. It doesn't just be like, give me your money right away. Because, yeah. I think it's the same idea with when people first started on YouTube um, and the, there was the subscribe button because a subscription typically is like a paid service. So people would get like, oh, I don't want to subscribe to your channel because I don't want to pay to watch your content or anything like that. So it was this kind of like hard place, I guess, for the creators of the time being like, no, 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 we want you to subscribe so that we can see like, or rather so that you can see that like, um, our videos have come out and stuff like that rather than uh wanting to have it so that then like you're paying us for a service that was, yeah it was, it was a bit tricky for them so nowadays people have enough kind of you know knowledge native knowledge of youtube i suppose to know that a subscription is just like a hey i'm seeing your stuff rather than hey i'm paying to be here kind of thing hopefully that makes sense but yeah because I always kind of was like, oh, I want to see what they're offering, but I don't actually want to join their, their memberships. But it's like, actually, if you press join, it doesn't make you sign up right away. So I've got a mini calendar here, and I did the mini calendar in a stretched version. So, hmm, this week was a challenge. We had a challenge on both of them, and then you're a brain dump space. Okay. Oh no, PayPal! <laughs> PayPal is thinking it's not really me. That's just rude. Like, I think, I think, I think, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring this all the way up and we're going to put in that header bar, which I probably shouldn't have ruled all the way across because now I'm going to have blue where I should have gray. Say poor future planning from me, but it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We're going to put in some banners so that we can bring in some of that kind of decorative element from our start of month setup. Start of the, the good month of Junevember. <laughs> Junevember. I love it so much. <laughs> uh, silly. Anyways, so we're going to put in our tape here and... I'm not going to put in the tape underneath yet. When we get to colouring in, I possibly will, but because we've got that blue line on top, I think that if I put the tape there, it's going to be really hard to see my dot grid. And I need the dot grid so that I can line up my uh, line up my little diagonal lines. So, diagonal lines going in so that I can put in my little candy stripe border which I have done candy stripe since my start of journal like my first journal setup I did it as part of my I will remember what it was called Christmas setup in December duh, of 2021 yep 2021 Christmas setup of 2021 I did candy stripe in that too 
Uh, so I used red and green and white, and I did it as part of the borders for my setup, which was quite cute, but there were other issues that I took with that setup that meant that I didn't use it as much as I would have liked. I mean, like, doing the candy stripe took forever, so that was something that kind of deterred me from setting up more pages and using my journal more. Uh, I also, it was just, like, super busy. Um, I think it was because I was trying to I was trying to do my journal setups and I was doing two of my own journals and then I was also doing a journal for Rachel and I was also doing a journal for Vogel and then I was in theory also going to be doing Vlogmas like I don't know I'm like the queen of bite off more than you can chew and then like be on the struggle bus about it <laughs> so yeah um I do like the candy stripe it's just it's a little bit time consuming and I think that last time I did the, the candy stripe, I don't remember if I put washi tape borders down to keep it nice and neat. I probably did because I am that way inclined, but I don't remember. I also feel like I want to put a candy stripe border down here. So I'm probably going to do that one too, but we will see. I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided. We might just leave it as it is. We'll just do candy stripe along the top. Because if I start doing it there, then I won't stop. <laughs> I feel like everywhere needs to have candy stripe. Otherwise it's incomplete, which it's not necessarily, but voila. I think that the thing that I am um using is like a not like a silver lining, but a validation of having the lower blue border on these candy stripe sections is that it matches the blue dividers that I have for each of these sections so while it's not my first choice probably uh I'm trying to make my peace with it by reminding myself of that oh that was a little sloppy come on Jess we're trying to be doing these nice knees nice please please Eemigui. Eemigui. I don't know if you guys can hear my pen, but it's like, I'm not like really into ASMR videos. <laughs> um, I don't think that that's really something I enjoy. I think more often than not, it just gives me the heebie-jeebies rather than feeling like a peace inducing thing. Um, I think it's the kind of thing that I like, I'd rather hear some of those noises in person, but oftentimes it gives me the kind of same vibes that are you know when you rub polystyrene blocks together? <laughs> like, I'm, now I'm not going to demonstrate that for you because it sounds awful, but I find a lot of the time um, that's the kind of feeling that that uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry that I got songs stuck in your head. Um, Oh, let's see. You work for a hotel and a guest just called saying the mirror in their room is falling off. Oh, Lord. I mean, I hope that it doesn't because that sounds messy. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Next time on Hotel Nightmares or whatever. There's probably a show like that, right? <laughs> skick, skick, skick. I'm very much hoping that when we pull this tape off, the blue line at the bottom doesn't bother me. And that is my sincerest hope for this layout oh don't forget this one that would be mighty unfortunate okay so i'm like a little bit bothered by it just a little bit though it's not the worst thing in the world and i guess it's like not the most noticeable thing ever but it could have been better do, 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 do. Do, so when I was first bullet journaling I was very much trying to find like not necessarily my style I suppose but I did like a lot of different lettering and um different types of header designs and stuff just like playing around trying to see what I uh wanted to do with it I guess and I think that because I don't want to do this again uh that's just like a special header. Maybe we could do like a smaller version of it. 
Because I was doing arrows, wasn't I? I was doing arrows for the underneath sections. I'm like, ah, oh, part of me kind of just wants to do that again. I'm going to put in some dots for that. I'll probably just put in like a uh, little dot, dot marker dots. Your past to-do list is so full. I mean, I like having a full to-do list though. So I, sometimes I write things off in, in bigger, like I, I expand things to more steps to fill space sometimes. Um, but yeah. So this guy here, like these two lines just meant like moving, migrating, moving it across. Um, and then, you know, I was wondering about the top and I was just like, I can see the top. You scroll. <laughs> That's fair. Whoops. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. I got a good list of stuff done and then this was just like a brain dump space. So hmm, how do I want to do this? I feel like part of me wants to just do the little... They're brush lettered. We're going to put brush lettering in. We're going to do it. Like, I'm thinking about this too much. Uh, do I want to do them with capitals, though? Because I did capitals on this version. And that... Uh, I think... Uh, uh. <laughs> Let's see. We're going to just write them out in pencil first. M-O-N. And then T-U-E. And wed and there because i now do my brush lettering a bit bigger i guess um we want to take up slightly less space sat and sun i find s to be like the hardest character to brush letter i swear Monday and Tuesday sometimes I just get a little lazy and do a little folography and we also can just go through and neaten up some of the letter forms so that they don't look messy and neaten up some of the curves so they don't look messy Add in some little tails so it doesn't look messy. <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. How do I do a W? Gosh, W is also not a letter that I like very much for bl bl blush lettering. Come on, you. Wed. Go, Wednesday. That doesn't look too bad. That looks okay. Wednesday and thur Thursday. Cause um yeah, the lettering that I've done in my old journal was all done with just like a fine liner. And so it is just Foligraphy, whereas this one we are doing with the brush lettering pen. And I, I have gotten considerably better at brush lettering, but I still have a long way to go, in my personal opinion. Uh, F. F. R. I. Friday. Cute. And then S, my nemesis letter. Oh, I'm just not good at doing the letter S, so I'm just going to foligraphy this S because it'll just look better if I do it that way. And the T is okay. We can do a little bit of neatening up on that one. Nothing wrong with neatening things up. And then we can go and add in that thickened downstroke for the S because, yeah, S and I don't get along when it comes to any kind of calligraphy. <laughs> you hate the letter K. I don't know. I think I'm better at K than I am at... Because K would go up and then thick down and then... Like that, K. Whereas S, I can't get the pen to do the thing neatly ever. 
Because <laughs> then, like, the inside doesn't look... It's just like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I don't find K as bad, eh? I think that it really depends on how I want to join it to the next letter. That's probably the biggest issue is with K. Because, like, I think of K as the same way as I think of B. So, like, B, like, you curve up, go down, and then go down and around kind of a thing. So, a K is the same. It's, like, you curve up, and you go down, and then when you do the next curve over, you just bring it to the middle rather than to the bottom. So, that's, like, K. But then it's, like, how do we join it to the next thing? That's the hard part, I find. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Excuse me. It's water. Tink. Mm-mm-mm. Saturday's looking cute. We have Sunday, which we are going to do with the foligraphies because boo hiss to the S. You know what's really great? When your name has two S's right next to each other and you don't like S in calligraphy. Well, don't like doing it in calligraphy. <laughs> you know what's also really great is when you don't like letters that are next to each other because you can never letter them the same twice. And every single one of your names has double letters. <laughs> like, grrr. Alrighty, that looks kind of cute. Not too, not too complicated. Fairly simple. Um, now we did do arrows for the for the first iteration of this, and it doesn't really match with the theme. But I, I feel like I kind of I don't like need to include them. That's not really the right word for it. But I feel like I want to. Let's see. I think the troublesome part with S is that you might because you start like halfway of the actual cursive lettering, halfway of the actual cursive lettering. Maybe I think that um because I, I know there's like a fair few different ways that you can do an S. Like you can do an S like that. Or you can do an S like that. Um, or you can do the one that people sometimes do, which is like, it's kind of like a cross between the two. It kind of like curves. I don't even know. They kind of go like that sometimes. Like, so, so it's like if we do Jess, E, S, S, or E, S, S. Or <laughs> E, S, S. And this is typically the way that I would want to do it because I like having the curve over. I don't know. Unsmiley face. No me gusta. <laughs> this takes a lot of practice for what it's worth. Um, I'm, I'm still not at my happiest point with it, but... I'm trying. This is kind of a mix of both, honestly. Like, some of these letters are foligraphy because we just drew them out, like, for instance, like the letter S. We just drew them out thin first and then went and added in the thickened part. Whereas some of them I can do. Like thick downstroke and thin upstroke and thick downstroke. Yeah. And then just neaten it up a little bit kind of a thing. So, shrug. <laughs> oh, Yes. I appreciate Monica letting people know because if I let them know to make sure that you're watching the live version, it doesn't necessarily work. So I'm going to do the header the same way that I've done these. So that is going to be June, November. Yes. So. You. N. V. E. M B nice curve over E Oof, that was curly. Ah uh. June Vember <laughs> There we go. I'm just gonna neaten up this J a little bit too so that it looks a little bit more no proper June November and this is going to be June November 5th to 9th uh, which okay so I think we need to decide how we're going to do the 
numbers down the side compared to the numbers over here because these ones were all done on arrows and I kind of like the idea of arrows but that also means that if I'm going to do an arrow here I kind of want to do an arrow there and this was in 2016 so I'm trying to cut with the color scheme right now and it's uh, gotten out of hand <laughs> you gotta narrow things down rainbow theme but only if all of the rainbow colors match otherwise boff also tink I know that we just had a drink break but I'm thirsty <laughs> mm -mm. So, I think if we're going to go with arrows, because I kind of like the idea of it, we are going to want to do them consistently throughout. And I kind of liked the fact that we had different types of arrows. So, we might just treat this part eh, as more of like a true, true recreation kind of thing. I don't know how I'm going to put this on the page so you can kind of actually see it. Hopefully, you can kind of see it that way. There we go. So... We had it on the second last line. We also had an underline for each of these. Why not? But I'm not going to do a double. Because double seems excessive. There we go. Monday. Tuesday. Wednesday. Thursday. Friday. Friday's going to need to have a little break or... There we go. You can just pretend that it dotted over. And Saturday. And Sunday. There we go. There's a little underlines because we're doing a little bit of a recreation, but something, something still elevated. Now, with my arrows, they all came to the same place and they were all... One, two, three six six dot grid spaces so we're going to do something similar to that uh what pen do i want to use i'm going to just use my ink joy and we're going to do it in the same place so there we go there we go because at least if i put the arrows in here then i can also put an arrow in on top and then have them all kind of tie in together a little bit better. If I just put the arrows here, it's it's not that it looks odd, and it's it, it's that's not quite what I mean by it. But it doesn't necessarily fit with the rest of the setup. And I think that I obviously put these <laughs> lines in first, and then went to draw the arrow over the top, forgetting that an arrow doesn't necessarily come the whole way down, uh, like the tail end of the arrow the middle kind of arrow shaft doesn't actually go all the way to the end, but I'd obviously drawn the line in first and then remembered that. So, oh well. That's looking cute. This one has a little, I think they all had little balls on the end because they all had to <laughs> finish at the same point. Uh, you come out here. That looks good. And then... Maybe I'll go put the numbers in first so I know where they are. And I'm going to put the numbers in blue so that it kind of ties in a little bit nicer. Uh, you are one, two, three. And I wrote 14th. I'm not going to write TH because that is not something that I do at all anymore. We decided that you were the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, tenth. And the 11th. That looks a little bit nicer. I personally think. I personally think that looks a little bit nicer. Okay, so your arrow is like that. Your arrow was like super midgy arrow. Like tiny little arrow. Arrows are a, quite a fun theme. I like that you can kind of just add little bits of decoration to them and whatnot. And just make them all a little bit different. I think that's kind of cool. Out to the side and then to the middle. Kind of looks like a spear tip. And then that one has a little line on it. And then this one is more of a flat triangle kind of looking thing. And I did a little bit of decoration there. That one had a little extra triangle with it. And then a little dot. I used to have a triangle washi tape that I could use for this kind of thing, but... Uh, they would not have matched the color palette at all. <laughs> yeah, that 
um, recreated things for your first full year in the journal. Yeah, so I think that it's it's kind of cool getting to see people recreate other people's themes in general. Um, but I've never done like a proper recreation of one of my journal themes. Like I might have used the same theme twice, but it's not necessarily a recreation because it's like completely different. <laughs> um, go with a little ball here, which I obviously had put in before I put in the line work, but it's all good because I did not do that this time. I mean, this is the thing. It doesn't need to be exactly the same. It just needs to be similar vibe. Because I know that that's something that Boho Berry would say a lot, the whole idea of, like, your vibe attracts your tribe and stuff. Which I think is a reasonable quote. Cute. Okay, so this one we just have, like, regular kind of frayed end type thing going on. I'm going to move my chair around so I can get a good angle on it. And then that one has little arrowy bits. I mean, they don't need to be exactly the same. I need to keep telling myself that, but It's going to be a lot easier to do these parts <laughs> if I'm working from this angle because then I can actually see how they line up against each other because now you can kind of see like this one does not actually line up well. But when I was viewing it from before, it looked fine or at least okay. Now it's like, mm, nope, absolutely not. Uh, that's cool. Like you recreated the Boba theme for your friend's journal. I would love to do that theme in my own journal um, one day at some point because it was just a lot of fun. And I uh, hope that Rachel liked it. I think she did. Vague recollections of her liking it, at least. <laughs> um, okay, so I've done way more on this one than I did on the last one, because I wasn't paying attention. But it doesn't really matter. This is like a little checkered flag kind of looking thing. I did a lot of these little lines, didn't I? had a lot of those in amongst everything. There we go. I'll just do that one. It's like a little, little chessboard arrow. Making my tails a little bit bigger than I probably need to. Um, just because I feel like I need to fill space, but I actually don't need to fill space. And I need to remind myself of that. Okay. Keep it a little bit more slim lined here. Okay, like calm down. <laughs> so I was just like, oh yeah, you need to come out to as far as the doctor comes out. I'm like, actually, I don't and probably shouldn't. So, not doing that anymore. Whoops. This is supposed to be a recreation, but better. But my last two arrows look a little bit floundy, but it's fine. Good job, tiny floundy arrows. You lived as few dead to dream. There we go. Put some triangles. And then they had some little dots, which is kind of cute. Ugh, my pen is having a hard time. <laughs> use the same thing that changed up the colors yeah i think it's like the idea of a recreation versus an inspired by yeah and i think that that's terminology that people don't necessarily use very well not necessarily you i'm just saying like people in general like the collective the community um is like we we um people who say like oh you know this layout was inspired by abc and then you look at it and it's exactly the same i'm like that's not an inspired by anymore that is a recreation and so like what we're doing here today is more of a recreation because we're trying to make it quite similar like slight differences obviously because like we've changed the header to be more in keeping with the rest of the lettering style and whatever else but but yes anyways i'm on a side note and i need to draw in my arrow tails and I might be being just a little bit precious with them. But that's just because I care. Go. Those two go there. That looks cute. We've got our little arrowhead looking swell. Because um, what I kind of thought was that if we do these this way, uh, we can kind of um, put an arrow at the top. One that is kind of similarly decorative, I suppose. Um, 
and we can have the numbers of like you know this to that kind of above and below it that was kind of my thinking and this guy here is a mess i mean <laughs> that was good that was good I remember um, putting these in and being like excited. I'm like, oh, look at all the different types of arrows that I I got to do and all of this, and it was just, it was a bit of fun. Alrighty, so that looks kind of cute. Um, a little bit heavier compared to the kind of lightness that we've got on this one, but still alright. And we're gonna do another arrow up the top here, and we're gonna have it be like you know, June, November fifth to eleventh. Okay, now. I do have 2016 written along the edge here. So I might do 2023 up the top. 2000, how big is that? How much space do I need for that? 23 is bigger though. I'm just gonna write 2023. So okay, three and a half centimeters roughly. So three and a half centimeters roughly gives me that much space. And I'm gonna use the blue pen. thousand and <laughs> I was I was having this conversation the other day I was like when did we change I'm pretty sure it was 2020 but like when did we change to say like 2023 2022 2021 rather than like 2009 2011 or like 2011 like you know 2023. And we'll bring our little heart in because we had a heart on that one too. Because I think that it was around 2020 probably that we started saying 20 something. Like nowadays in retrospect we say 2019, but I don't know if we necessarily called it 2019 when we were in 2019, you know? The things that plague my mind. Click. So we need a little arrow. The arrow can go here. We made the arrow tip very big. And we'll just put some dots on it because that seems to be something that we did on the other ones. And in terms of the tail, we're just going to have like a little regular looking little tail irregular just like this is how I would typically associate an arrow tail to look there go we'll add some little lines to make it kind of cute so June November 5 to 11 that looks cute <laughs> that's sweet so so sweet Oh, sleep well. Thank you for being here. You remember saying 2010. Interesting. I don't remember saying 2010. I remember saying 2010. I very much remember saying 2009, but interesting. And I obviously wrote 2016 here, so shrug. I don't know. So that's just a to-do list. That one's fine. We're going to want to put some dots in for our events because oh, this person is such a busy person. We're going to put in three event dots per day. So they've got them there so that they can do all of the wonderful things that they need to get done. And we're going to want some headers for these. I don't even know if I want a header. I might put a header for the brain dump space at least. So we will write bur brain dump. And there is where brain dump will go. A my little calligraphers, little calligraphies. I in brain and dump. There we go. We'll just neaten it up because I'm being a little bit, a little bit haphazard with it. 
there we go. That looks pretty good though. Little brain dump space. And then, so this top section here was supposed to be a challenge. That D doesn't look thick enough. That didn't sound right. Anyways, we're just going to move on from that. Whoops. Uh, we'll just put a little colon here so that we can write out our little brain dumping tasks. Excellent. <laughs> um, and then out here would just be my to-do list. So I don't feel the need to like write ahead of that because it's just a task list. The challenge would go here and then the calendar would go there. The calendar is the most interesting one because typically I would not put a calendar in like that. Um, but we're going to put the calendar here and we're going to need to section it out in a way that doesn't look dumb. So if you're six and a half, six, three, yep. So the three and a half mark is where the Thursday goes. And then they have like, they, I say this, this is like some random person. It is not some random person. It is me. Um, and we can put little highlights in for those ones but yeah it's just like an it's like a weirdly positioned calendar in my opinion because this is where the monday goes and then the thursday goes here so then the wednesday went there and the tuesday went there okay 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 odd i think it's just because i was like oh yeah i need to center it perfectly otherwise it'll look strange and i'm like in doing that, you've made it look strange. <laughs> okay, not not necessarily, not so much. So, for, okay, I need to make sure I don't accidentally copy this calendar out. I need to actually put in our calendar for our June Vember. Otherwise, this is totally not usable for June Vember. How disappointing. I might put another arrow in the corner, like you said, to, to tie the pages together. I think that would be a pretty good idea. So, this ends on a Friday. So, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Friday and it comes up to I've written it in the middle here gosh so strange okay 30 29 28 27 26 then 25 nope that was wrong whatever we're putting it here anyways because <laughs> it needs to be like another line up but it's okay. 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20. Oh gosh, 19. This is looking just a little bit strange uh, because of general stuffing ups, but 18. 17, we persevere, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, and then 11 is like actually in the middle, 10, 9, oops, 8, we've also not put on our highlights and I've used a pen that is not, um, water fast which means i can't really put my highlights over the top of it either six five and then four three two one will be up here four three two one and then we'll just put some dots in because that's typically what i like to do to signify days that are like of the week but not of the month there you go that looks good well, actually, it looks interesting at best. So because we didn't get to put our dots in to highlight the week, because I'm not going to go and use my dot pen over the top of my ink joy because it will just bleed, we're going to put them in here to signify the days of the week. There we go. So that looks pretty cute. I don't see much point in labeling that this is the calendar. That seems like a bit of a waste of effort to me. But we will put in a divider to section off the calendar versus the section above it. So we can put that in. That's okay. Clink. That looks good. A little bit more reasonable. <laughs> 
Let me see if you can fill in the space that's now on top of the calendar with two arrows pointing at the weak number and header. I don't want to add too many arrows because arrows aren't really part of the kind of, um, I guess it's not like so much of a theme because there's not really a theme here. I mean, if we had a theme, we can call it a blue and silver theme at that. At that. Um, so I'm, I'm probably not going to add those ones in there, but I am tempted to add an arrow down the bottom here just so that then it feels a bit more balanced. Um, first of all, though, we do need to go and add in our days of the week. Otherwise, absolutely pointless. What, what was the point of putting the dots out? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I might put in a challenge header because that one feels like it kind of needs a label. Um, obviously don't actually have a challenge going right now, so I don't really know what kind of a challenge this person is undertaking. But challenge... L-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-G-N-
And it says wink because I was thinking ink. No stabbing, wink. I feel like we're going to put that in bracks. No stabbing, wink. <laughs> Terrible. Alrighty. We're good. We didn't because I was like, oh yeah, I was like, no stabbing wine. And then I read the ink. So now it's wink. So now it's in brackets. So now it's like, can I do it? Like no stabbing. Wink. Anyways. Regardless. So the challenge is looking good. We've got the to-do space. I think in the idea of elevation, we are gonna do some highlighted lines because Jess loves some good highlighted lines. We splat. I just like the way that they fill in white space and they're not like too obtrusive, I suppose. You can just put those in. And if we had have planned it ahead, we could have put this in on there as well. But we didn't. And I say we as if you guys had any control over it. But, you know, somebody could have stopped me. No, I'm kidding. Like, that calendar turned out to be uh, more of a hassle than I was expecting. Because the spacing on it was just so strange. So strange. Oh, my gosh. But this is looking cute, though. I mean... This is actually a weekly that I could probably use. Like, I would not be opposed to using this weekly. I do personally prefer to have more space <laughs> to um, have, like, my task list and stuff rather than, like, a larger brain dumping section. But this is actually looking pretty good. Um, we did say we were going to add an arrow down the bottom. I think instead what we're going to do is we're going to add an arrow here because this is actually open space for it. Um, and we're going to do it there. There we go. That looks cute. And we'll make it. We'll make it a an aggressive pointy arrowhead. And we'll fill it in black because why not? We'll add a dot and we'll add some lines. I'm just getting really decorative with it. And in terms of the arrow tail, we're gonna do. The little flecked ones, because I kind of like those. Cute. And then it kind of just like balances out the page a little bit. That doesn't look too bad. I feel like we need a side-by-side -side comparison. So we'll flip back to the front. So side-by-side -side comparison of our first page here. So this is how we recreated our cover page, I guess, because it wasn't really a cover page because it wasn't one, our monthly log. So we still have the general structure is the same. We've just kind of elevated it a little bit. We don't have that like harsh black outline on our candy stripe. We've got an actual border at the bottom. So it looks a little bit more finished, I suppose. We also decided to go a little bit more hardcore on our June November header. So we've got our kind of gradient lettering, with our drop shadow, which just kind of ties into the color palette a little bit nicer compared to this one where we kind of did horizontal, get out, diagonal lines in this part of the lettering and then just like a sketchy fill in for this part. Choices. So that's looking pretty cute. When it came to our next page, which is the habit tracker, we decided to change the orientation of this one because this kind of orientation is just for most of us, at least for me, not so user friendly compared to this one. So we took it into a different orientation. We kept the habits as written out things. We've got some different habits here, you know, some important stuff that this person needs to do. We kept our little quote though, because it's a recreation. We kept our little highlights for the weekend days, that kind of thing. One thing that was an addition that wasn't necessary, intentional addition, but it was something that like we did was have an extra column here, maybe to mark in days where like maybe something happened where your habits uh, were going to get affected by that. Like maybe you weren't feeling well, so you didn't do your juggling practice or whatever. Um, or you could mark in to say like, hey, I actually felt really good today and I got all my habits done. So maybe a little way to mark in that kind of thing. Um, we also took the dots out and just did a kind of cross hatch thing with the pen. It's just way easier. So then if we move on to our weekly, which is a little bit further on in this one, so flick, 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 flick. So same general structure for our 
left hand page we have each of the spaces for the days of the week um, we've got some little blue dots in here to kind of tie in our color pa palette a little bit nicer and we've done a fairly at least in my opinion better job of the lettering for each of the days of the week we also didn't put in the full day title so that they're all kind of more similarly spaced uh, we wanted to tie in our header, done the same lettering for that, and brought the arrows into other parts of the layout. So it looks pretty nice. So then we're on to the right-hand side, question mark, right-hand side, yes. We've still got the challenge. We've got a very important being a better person challenge. We had the calendar without the header because it wasn't necessary. We have our brain dump and we have a to-do this week space. Excellent. So could we recreate it? Yes, we did. Did we do a better job? I don't know, it's up to you. If you think we did a better job on this version with Junevember, then make sure that you give this video a big thumbs up. Or if you think we didn't do a better job, I mean, you can give me a down thumb, but I'll be I'll be devastated. <laughs> Alrighty, gorgeous humans, I'm gonna skadoodle. I hope you have a fabulous rest of your day. Thank you for being here either in live or on the replay. And next week we will have another live stream with the topic chosen by our team members. So if you're part of the team, watch out for a poll who's going to ask you what we should do our streaming on. I will see you then. Goodbye, gorgeous people. Have a good rest of your day.